All right, now that we've got the front view and the top view of the bracket drawn, we're going to move over to the side view. Now to do the side view, I'm actually going to use construction lines. I'm going to construct the entire side view with nothing but construction lines uh, to project the features over. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and create a construction layer. So I'm going to go to my layer properties. We'll create a new layer, call it construction. And any color will do. I don't know why, for some reason, in my head, construction is always yellow. It can really be any, any, uh, any layer that you want it to be. Um, and as far as the color goes, we're, or, I'm sorry, that was the color. As far as the line type goes, uh, we want to go ahead and make that continuous. Sometimes I do make it a dot, like I'll load in the dot pattern. Um, but for the sake of this video, and probably uh, most people's preference would be to make it continuous. I think you'll see it better uh, in this video. So we're gonna, we've got the construction layer set uh, created. We're gonna set that layer current, double click it to put a little green check mark next to it. Looking good. All right, so now we are, uh, we've got the construction layer set current. Now we're gonna draw a construction line. So you can find the construction line over here in the draw panel of the home ribbon. And notice how draw has that little down arrow next to it. If I click on that down arrow, I can get more options here. So this right here is the construction line. You can click on that icon. You can also type in X line if you prefer to type things. So construction line. Now, when this command starts, there's lots of different ways we can draw a construction line. If you look at the command line down here, you can see I could do horizontal, vertical, angle, bisect, or offset. Mostly we just use horizontal and vertical. So you can either click on the word H-O-R for horizontal. You can type the letter H because that's the capital letter that you see there. It's also blue. So you could type that or you could press the down arrow on your keyboard and get to the option that way. Three ways you can do it. There's no right or wrong way. However, however it is that works for you, you just uh, pick one that you like. So I'm going to actually mix it up in this video and do it all different ways. So I'll do the down arrow this time. So I did down arrow. I've highlighted HOR for horizontal and I'll press enter on my keyboard. Now what we're going to do, I'll just start at the bottom. We're going to project over only what's going to be visible in that side view. What would we actually see in the side view? So we'll click here, here, at this little corner and the very top. So those are all going to be visible lines. I'm going to, well, I ended that command, but I actually need to do it for the top as well. We're going to project those over. So I think what I'm going to do is just pin this open. You see that little push pin? Is it open? We're going to keep coming back to this construction line. So this time I uh, need to do it horizontal again. So I'll click on the word H-O-R. I'm going to click here, click here, and then click down here. Press enter to end that command. You can press enter to repeat the command. If it was the last command that you had and you need to go back into it, you can just press enter. It repeats your previous command. And this time I'm going to do a vertical construction line. So vertical. And what I'm going to do here, make sure when you do this vertical construction line, make sure you look at your O-snaps. You need to have the intersection O-snap turned on. So I will click here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to snap to, we're going to draw a construction to wherever this horizontal construction line intersects with my miter line. Right here. Press enter to end the command. Let's go to the visible layer. And we're just going to draw out these, these lines. So click here, here, all the way up to the top, here. It actually comes to a little angle like that. Press enter to end that command. I'm going to press enter to repeat the command. Come all the way over here. Repeat the line command. We're going to go all the way. It doesn't go all the way down though, right? And then we are going to one more line. Just this little guy right there. Perfect. Now we can always come in here and just turn off the construction layer if you want to make sure. Just to kind of declutter it and you can see what's going on here. Um, looks good. Now I'm going to turn that construction layer back on and this time I'm going to set uh, my construction layer current. We're going to do the construction line. I'll type H for horizontal, H enter. 
And I'm just going to project over these uh, circles here, They're those holes that go through. So this is going to be hidden. That will be center. This will be hidden. Come over here. We'll set our layers current. Hidden from here to here. Align from here to here. Center. Line from here to here. That's looking good. Now we'll do more construction lines. Set the construction layer current. We're going to do more horizontal. So H, enter. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to project over these slots. So if I click here, this one's going to be hidden, center, center, hidden. Do another construction line. So I pressed enter to end that command. I'm starting the command again so that we can do V for vertical this time. And we can click here. Remember that was hidden, center, center, hidden. The two center lines are in the middle. Now I know this is a hot mess. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? Um, when I'm looking at this, it's hard to kind of decipher what it is that I'm looking at. There's a lot of lines. A couple of things that I want to show you. It's, I don't think it's really all that relevant in this view, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. We can highlight this. So I'm doing that blue um, selection window, uh, the, the, the blue selection window. I'll highlight just what that does is anything that's fully, when it's blue, anything that's fully contained inside of it is going to get highlighted. And then I'm going to right click, go to draw order, and bring to front. So sometimes if you're looking at this, you know, your lines are on top of each other, and sometimes the yellow lines might come to the front, and that just brings your lines, the ones that you want, to the front. This is a good example. So look, I've got that construction line and that visible line kind of competing with each other here. So if I select all of that, right click, keep your eyes down on, on, on that area bring to front. Now my visible line is on top of that construction line. You don't, you don't have to do this. This is just a visibility thing. So if, if you're doing this and you can't really tell where your lines are and you want to push those construction lines back, you can do that. Another way that you could do it too is just highlight all of your construction lines. Do the same thing, draw order, but uh, send under objects or send a back. And that just pushes those behind everything. Uh, ultimately, though, we're going to turn off this construction layer. All right, so let's come in here and draw our lines. Remember, this was hidden. That one's center, center. This one's hidden. Set the center layer current. Line. Here. And here. All right, that looks good. OK, so we're done with the construction lines. This is what's so great about AutoCAD is I'm done with my construction lines. All I have to do is just come in here and I can just turn them off. I don't see them anymore. So much better than doing it by hand where we would have to sit there and erase those lines and you know, erase a hole in our paper trying to get all those lines out of the way. So this looks great. Uh, I've got my side view drawn. I've got the visible lines where they need to be. I've got hidden, center, hidden, hidden, center, hidden. I've got this all taken care of. Now, a couple of things that I see, and you see too, hopefully. Um, we need to, uh, two things. My, my center lines don't have the right line type to them. If I come in here and look at my layer properties, I can tell they're definitely set to center. So they should be long, short, long, but they're just these straight lines. They're continuous lines right now. The reason for that is they're just so short that line type isn't able to repeat. If I had a longer line, it really is going to let it repeat, but I need to have this much space to be able to have that pattern repeat. So my lines are just too short for that pattern. So the way we're going to fix that is we're going to adjust what's called the line type scale, your LTS, your line type scale. Your line type scale is what adjusts how big or small your dashes are. Before we do that, though, we also need to come through here and lengthen these lines. Remember, our center lines hang off the edge just a little bit. My circles already did that when I put the center marks in. But we need to come in here and do this. So I'm going to unpin 
this. I don't need that anymore. But I'm going to come over here to modify. I'm going to pull down that little arrow here at this icon right there. It's the lengthen command. You can also type in L-E-N for lengthen. Click on that. And before you start anything with this command, I just started the command. I haven't clicked anywhere. I haven't pressed enter. I haven't entered anything. Um, before you get started, what you need to do is you need to tell it the length that you want it to lengthen. So we're going to come in here and we're going to go to delta. We've got all these options, delta, percent, total, dynamic. Delta means change. We're going to change the length of our line. So we'll choose that. We could have done the down arrow and gone to delta. We could have also typed in DE because those were the capital letters in that option. So our delta length right now, um, it should default to, to zero. I, I've already done this on this drawing before. So mine is defaulting to 0.25. I do want you to type 0.25 here. There's not actually a formula for exactly what the delta length needs to be, how far these center lines extend out past the edge. Um, 0.25 works for us just because this project happens to be um, an overall uh, a length of six. But if it were an overall length of six feet, 0.25 would barely show up at all, right? So 0.25 works for this one. Uh, we're going to press Enter. Now everything that I click on is going to go a length of, it's going to extend out a length of 0.25. So watch, I have not clicking yet. I'm just hovering. Everything I hover on just jumps out 0.25. If I want it to go up, I need to be on the top half of this line. If I want it to go down, I'll be on the bottom half of that line. So I always wait till the very end to do this, as you can see, but I'll click here, click here. The reason I wait till the very end is so that I can just go do everybody all at once. I don't have to keep repeating this command. Come over to this view. Come up to the top view. I'm just clicking. Everybody goes out 0.25. This looks good. Press enter to end that command. Now, sometimes just doing that makes my line long enough that I start to see that dashed pattern that I need to see in my center line, but it did not work for me this time. Even at the longer length, um, it still is not showing that center line pattern. Also, if I look at my hidden lines, there are gaps, those are really, really big dashes there. So those need to be smaller as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in LTS that's short for line type scale or your LT scale. So LTS, press enter. Right now it's set to one. So one is what we call a global line type scale, your global LT scale. Everything, it's gonna affect every dashed line in your drawing. Right now my dashes are too big. It's set to one. So if I need my dashes to be smaller, I'm gonna enter a number that's smaller than one. If my dashes were too small right now, I would enter a number that's bigger than one. So maybe I would go for a two. So usually when you're playing around with this, a lot of times, uh, you know, the easiest first thing to do is just, if, if your line doesn't look right, try 0.5. If that didn't work, try two. And that's a good kind of starting point. So my lines are, my gaps are too, too big. So I'm going to make them smaller. I'm going to type in 0.5. It's going to change it globally. So keep an eye not only on the center lines, but also on the hidden lines. Everything's going to change. So 0.5, press enter. Look at that. Ooh wee, that looks good. All right, so we've got hidden lines here. We've got the center lines there. This looks great. Look up at my top view. Yep, this looks great. I am going to show you one more little trick. This is just a super cool thing to know about. Um, do you know, notice how I have these lines on top of lines? And that's because I, the way I did the center marks, I kind of put center marks on top of each other. So I have a line here and I have a line here. There's just lines on top of each other over here. There is a command that'll fix that for me. And I always wait till the very end of this project to do it. If I pull down the modify little arrow right here, you see the one that looks like a broom? This is called overkill. It deletes the duplicate objects. So when I click on this, select my objects, just select everything, press enter. This window pops up and I just leave it at all the defaults. I say, okay. 
and look what it did. Now I don't have a smaller line. This is just one long line. Any little pieces of lines that are sitting on top of each other will be deleted so that it just compresses down into one line. This is really, really helpful. It kind of definitely helps declutter your drawing, but it's really, really good to do this before we go in and start dimensioning. Because when we start dimensioning and you've got little pieces of lines here and there, you could accidentally snap on an endpoint of one line when you meant to snap at the endpoint of another line. So that can kind of, it's a little tricky. It can get you there. So overkill is a good one to do just to delete all the duplicate objects. And that is it. We are done with this project. In chapter five, you're gonna go back. We're gonna learn about mechanical dimensioning in chapter five. So we're gonna go back to this project and add dimensions. We're not doing that right now. We gotta learn all about dimensioning in chapter five before we do that. So for now, you're done. Chapter five, you're gonna learn how to dimension. You'll come back to this project, dimension it, and that's when you're gonna hand it in for a grade. So that is it. You have done the bracket. Congratulations.